Okay, and then moving on to um, the Weavers which is our open forum project inviting community presentations from various groups, uh, taking five minute presentations. Uh, first up, we have President Amy Brule from the Out Project, which is the uh, youth program of the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender uh, program, the Outreach Center. Also with us, Mr. Sonny Andres and Robert Benitez, in case Amy should tumble to the ground. Which is a possibility. Can I pass out our packet while Amy speaks? Um, I don't think there's any reason why not. Sure. Um, I'd like to thank Madam Chairman and her fellow commissioners for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, the Out Project was formed from the original youth group of the Antelope Valley GLBT Community Center, which is now called the Outreach Center because it's shorter and easier to say. Um, three years ago, a group of 15 GLBT gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and straight youth met to develop a mission and a vision for the youth organization, which was the Out Project will promote education to empower and make aware, outreach to involve and share experiences, activities to socialize and network, activism to create change and equality, and community to support and heal. The vision of those 15 youth was to create an Antelope Valley where they would feel safe walking down the street holding the hand of their boyfriend or girlfriend. Three years ago, the youth had five regular members that met one to two times a month. Two, it grew to a structured organization of 20 core members who meet every Saturday to learn, socialize, and support with quite a few other youth filtering in but not necessarily coming regularly. Um, the Out Project is open to gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, pansexual, intersex, asexual, androsexual, gynosexual, and straight ally youth ages 24 and younger. It has members that are college students, young professionals, high school students. They are active in their student government and in a variety of other community organizations and projects. Um, the Out Project aims to provide a safe space for LGBTQ, LGBTQ youth um, where they can feel accepted and valued for who they are and can commune with other youth like themselves. Um, they strive to create lasting change in our community and to make strides toward greater acceptance and equality for all. Another goal is to try to, provort a, try to provide a supportive adoptive family um, of sorts for those whose own families might not be quite as accepting. Um, our advisor, Sonny Andres, has been uh, invaluable in kind of being a mother hen of sorts and he's he's been amazing and he's going to share a couple ways that you as a commission might be able to par partner with us i'm actually going to let robert talk first and then i'll end so go ahead robert. okay good evening madam chairwoman and her fellow commissioners um if you'll look through the packet that we handed you you'll see um some events that we've already sort of collaborated with the city of lancaster um, in previous in previous years, two of them being the MLK Day of Service and one of them being the Equality Mural that we've done for the city's Unite Lancaster program. Um, both of our, all of these events have been efforts to sort of um, be servants in our community and really um, understand that we're willing to work for uh, equality and we really want to be champions of that. And I think there's no better way to sort of um, live that purpose rather than sort of serving that community and making, and making things beautiful for, for everyone. Um, just this past Martin Luther King uh, day of service, we were at the Western Hotel um, beautifying their garden and making sure that um, that will be ensured for future generations and educating people about our indigenous uh, plant life and, and wildlife that is sort of resident here in the Antelope Valley. Um, again, we really um, are, an, are an organization that um, believes in service and really striving for um, a, a place in our community through um, working and volunteering and, and just uh, living that. So thank you. I'll turn it over to Sonny now. Um, just to end, uh, we are so grateful for this op the invitation to be able to speak with you and to talk about some partnership opportunities that the city might consider. Uh, the final page of this packet review some of the things that Robert talked about. We've we participated in the city's MLK Day of Service since 2009. We helped to repaint the side uh, the 
the fence outside of the east side pool. Uh, we helped grace resources to count the homeless last year and then this year with the Western Hotel Museum. There are two areas that the Out Project um, really um, could benefit from, from help from the city. One is location. Um, the Out Project and the Outreach Center itself does not have a permanent location. And we have been hosting uh, youth conferences to um, promote uh, the Gay Straight Alliance Clubs on, at the high school and as well at the community college. And one of the things that we would really benefit from would be the city to, the city to consider co-sponsoring an event like that. Um, to co-sponsor by providing um, a, a venue that might be free of charge for the youth to be able to come in and to get outside speakers and outside trainers who are going to teach about advocating for themselves at the school level. Um, to be able to teach about anti-bullying campaigns, um, to talk about suicide prevention for our LGBTQ youth. Um, so this would be an opportunity for the city that would not necessarily cost them money, but would be an opportunity for them to partner with us and be visible in um, promoting safer schools, in promoting um, acceptance for everybody, regardless of, of their, diver their uniqueness and diversity. Um, and then the other is for the city to consider possibly helping us with outreach through advertising and some visibility. Um, one of the things that we are very grateful for with the city and helping us with the equality mural um, was to be able to fund such, such a, um, a project. And for many of us who helped Robert to write the proposal, we were um, sketchy on whether or not the city of Lancaster was ready to um, accept this type of a proposal. Um, but one of the things that was very apparent to us was that when we were referred to in the, in the press by the city, we were referred to as the nonprofit organization. And so we'd like to see the city take a um, more visible stand on um, on the diversity that uh, they are striving to um, promote in the Allo Valley and in, in the city um, by being more transparent about their support as well as to, to allow us to be able to have the youth possibly be part of the TV channel or to be able um, to put some of their events that are open to the public on the community calendar, um, things like that to, to help raise awareness and visibility for our LGBTQ youth here in the Allo Valley. Um, one of the things that we struggle with because of our fears and our closets is to be able to find those youth who need support. And so if the Tapestry Commission um, is, is willing to support us, we appreciate that. And so again, we're grateful for this opportunity to share. Thank you very much. Before uh, you sit down, does anyone have any questions? The equality wall, the pictures here are incredible, but the equality wall is, is stunning. And I think you said that's at East Side Pool, is that correct? Is that where that wall is? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The equality mural is on 10th Street West at uh -huh. the intersection of Avenue H8 and 10th Street West. Okay. So there's a long brick wall uh, that the city uh, primed for us. Um, provided the paint, and then we uh, had a call to artists out, and um, a local artist provided the um, design for the mural. I think it's wonderful. You should be, should be commended for that. I hope you're very proud, because I well, am. And we are. It was Robert's brainchild, and so we're Aww. very proud of Robert. Um, Robert was our previous uh, youth group president for the last two years, and then um, he's, we've, he's now stepped up and become one of our board members, and so... He's, uh, he's really stepped up to leadership, and, and we're grateful for that because we know that eventually us old people will <laughs> not be here to serve, and so we want to mentor our youth to become our future leaders. Right on. That was a project through the Unite Lancaster Commission, correct? Correct. When we were a puppy commission, Unite, Unite Lancaster was touted to us as a commission that had taken a path that came to fruition, so congratulations. Chair Dell, that was actually the Unite program from the city, but it was the Lancaster Neighborhood Vitalization Commission. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Um, do you have like a hotline number for teens to call in that are probably perhaps in crisis or anything like that? We don't. Um, what we do is we refer youth who are in crisis to the Trevor Project, which has a 24-hour, um, seven-day-a-week line. Um, I believe it's 1-800-TREVOR. 
um, but I can check on that. Um, when we do outreach activities, when we have youth come in, uh, we do provide information about the Trevor Project. They've been an organization based out of Southern California that's been serving um, youth who are questioning or identify as LGBT and helping them um, through, through crisis like that. Would you like to put your phone number for the organization on the record? Sure. It, the organization's phone number is 661-789-5874. That's 789-5874. Um, because we don't have a location, again, it's just a voicemail service. But of course, I put my cell phone number on there. So if anybody's in real crisis, uh, they can always call me. I'm also a licensed marriage and family therapist, so that helps too. So. <laughs> I'm always on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and is there also a web page? Yes. Um, it should be at the bottom of, of this, uh, this yellow uh, cover letter. Um, the, the email address for us is info at Outreach Center AV. Um, if you'd like to follow the Out Project, the youth program um, on Facebook or on Twitter, that's there. And then our, um, our, the center's website is the very last one listed. Thank you very much. I just went online, and the Trevor Lifeline is 866-488-7386, 866-488-7386. If you are in crisis or thinking about suicide, you deserve immediate support. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, uh, I just had uh, a comment. I'm a leader of uh, Art Studio AV, which is a uh, part of uh, many different artists here in the community, uh, stretching uh, from uh, Tehachapi all the way to Acton. And we would lo love to have you in our group, uh, in our group meeting, so that you can also share what you do. And um, you. a lot of the projects are also being presented here in the, in the gallery and different locations. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you know, and that is actually one of the things that we, we didn't include in this. Um, two years ago, uh, we were able to host a um, art show, an LGBT art show, our youth were able to display art on Lancaster Boulevard at the um, at the Arbor Lofts Gallery. And so it was an opportunity for our youth to um, be able to show their creative side. So thank you for the opportunity. That would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, next we have um, Janie Hodges, President and CEO of Paving the Way Foundation, providing community services for reentry. Yes, how Thank are you, you this evening? Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here and giving you information about our program. Uh, we have a reentry program that started about two years ago, and we are currently partnered with the city of Lancaster. We do the Wheat and Seed program, and our reentry part is is our reentry program is a part of that program. We have a 13-week program that. Gentlemen coming, gentlemen and ladies, excuse me, coming home from prison have an opportunity to uh, build resumes, to have interviewing techniques, to have a business card. We have a relationship with Hollywood Suit Outlet in Hollywood. So once they've completed that 13 weeks and had the actual one day uh, customer service training at ABC College, they go down, they get a full dress suit, includes everything so that they're prepared to go for their uh, first job interviews. We have actually graduated graduated over 125. Of those gentlemen, we have included a um, green job solar training course, which once they complete that training, where we can get a feel for who they are, what they're, um, if they're sincere about their um, coming back into the community and what they want to do with their lives. Then we move them to the solar training and they complete that course and we've gotten 12 of those uh, gentlemen hired that are still working in our community doing solar training. So we're very proud and pleased to um, offer this program. We um, have been contacted by the Walden House who is doing a program with the state and they're asking us to be able to bring gentlemen to our program to the community, help with housing, and those kinds of things. So we're really excited about the growth that we're experiencing. And I want to thank you. Um, the expungement program that you were speaking of just made my heart 
joyful because there's so many gentlemen that come home that don't get the opportunity to continue on even though they stay out of trouble and and they try to move on it's very difficult to find a job once you have a history unless you have some support from organizations such as the city and and people that that really care about giving a second chance to to folks um, we all know that there are certain ones that don't you know fit in that criteria because they just don't want to but the ones that want to change their lives, I really um, get to see that and I get to see how they move forward and it's really very rewarding. I brought some uh, brochures for you in case you want to take a look at what we do. Um, we are just here on Cedar. Uh, the next class will start in about three weeks. We're finishing up a graduation uh, next week and then we take a hiatus and we start again. So I would love to be able to chat about the expungement process, maybe get some of our guys and young ladies involved in that process and see if we can move some of our people through that. It would be awesome. Okay. Terrific. Any questions? Can I give you some flyers? Please. Please. Very good. Thank you very much for your time. Don't go anywhere. We probably have questions. Okay. Questions for Ms. Hodges? Not so much a question, just a comment. Jenny, thank you. It is so enriching to have somebody that cares about you and coming out of jail and hearing the stories of how you successfully place people and get them a job. That, that, that is incredible. And uh, that's what we're trying to do is have everyone feel included and important. And uh, the work you do, it amazes me. Thank you. And I forgot to say, I think I, re, I, I fit in at the create opportunities to flourish part. Um, and then I want you to know that I do go into our prison also. And so therefore, I've started to build relationships in other areas because there's a lot of need for people that want to make a change. And it's not a just I want, it has to be a handheld thing. There are gentlemen that have been gone more than half of their lives and they didn't have cell phones when they went, you know, and it's just heart wrenching to understand that when they come home, they are under such pressure to fit in somewhere where they've been away for years. It's, it's amazing that we don't really, st one gentleman told me that he, when he heard the dogs bark at night, because in prison there aren't those sounds, that he almost freaked out. They have uh, PTSD. There is that cell yard. So he came home after being gone 20 years. He goes to his bedroom, to the backyard. That was as far as he could go for a while. So there is a process that I don't think people understand when you come home, that you have to be involved with someone that cares, that can guide you through this process and, and in order to be successful. So I really feel that, that this would be a great opportunity for anyone that can help in any way, because it's just human nature to give and help. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick question. What is the percentage of the Hispanic uh, population that you receive? Um, there is about one third of our population. We have majority is African American. We have a lower population of Caucasian, and about a third of our group is Hispanic. And you have assistance in the translation and yes, translation and classes. Yes, okay. we do. And I'm getting someone to help me write it in Spanish. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you. Ms. Hodges, do you have any partnering requests that you had a fantasy could occur other than dollars dropping from the sky? You know, um, I've been so blessed recently that at the moment, I can't think of exact, other than the expungement component right. to what we're doing, because we're partnered with the college, we're partnered with the city, we've partnered with the sheriff's department. Now the, the state is, is a, a, attracted to our program. I really, my heart is full with what I'm doing. I can use probably some skilled volunteer efforts because of the funding that they give you is more programmatic. So, you know, actual help and volunteer with hands-on with some people with um, background 
in maybe marriage and family counseling. Um, we have the Tarzana treatment that is working with us for the uh, drug and alcohol, but maybe some family therapy because I'm finding that the women of the husbands that are coming home, they don't understand when you say you need to go get a job and I can't find one, what that does to me. So to be able to talk about that in depth, to be able to get both parties to understand what this means. Coming home, we look forward, we're all excited, and then it happens, and now, you know, two days later, you need to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of you all that time. You need to get out there and make something happen. Well, I go seven days, eight days, a month, two months, a year. Then what? What happens? I need some support, and so does she, to understand the right. reality of where I am in my life. Okay. So okay? a call for volunteers from the public. A call for volunteers from the public. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay. okay, next I believe we have, and I apologize in advance, Salvador Villanueva from El Despertarme del Nuestro Comunidad. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Right. Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Salvador Villanueva. Uh, I am the host of the radio program, El Despertar de Nuestra Comunidad, uh, which means the awakening of our community. Uh, and I want to thank you for the opportunity and invitation to this meeting. Uh, at the same time, I would like to invite the representative of the city of Lancaster, starting with the mayor, Mr. Rex Paris, uh, and all the personnel to get closer to the Hispanic community. Uh, our community wants to know more about what the city does, what the program are available for the Lancaster residents, what to do in case of disasters, what should they contact, and which department are in charge for the different activities, uh, etc. What do they have to do, and where should they go? Uh, they also want to know the right city regulations laws as well as the different events held in the city of Lancaster. Uh, at the same time, I would like to let you know why, that the Hispanic community is interested in working together for a, a better uh, city. This radio program uh, is an open forum for the communication in which we can get closer for mutual benefit. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your time and this opportunity to talk. Uh, and also I would like to mention uh, and, and everything I said is in base of the phone calls. This is talk radio 100%. We have different guests. We have different people, uh, all kind for the community. But uh, it's very sad because some people, Lancaster residents, they don't even know where this, the, the, the city hall. They don't know many places. Why? Because I see, or I don't see any communication so zero communication between Spanish community with the city of Lancaster. So that's why I'm here tonight to, to uh, request a more communication. My program is, on, like I said, open forum. Microphones are open but for, for, for you, for the city. Uh, and, and all the programs you want to communicate, I'm 100% uh, open and to help to cooperate. Uh, our program is, uh, I don't work for the, uh, for the radio station. We paid our, our hours. We try to get sponsors. Sometimes we don't have enough, en enough money to pay. We have to pay for our, our package, which is okay, but we have a great satisfaction to see how the community can, can know. Uh, we also talk, talk about the education, the careers, the, the, the different program. But uh, that's why I'm here tonight in, uh, here on City of Lancaster uh, requesting more, more communication, something I really, really will appreciate, and the Spanish community will appreciate for that. Thank you very much. I have questions. Yes. What time and station is your program? The uh, station is uh, a, a 1470 AM from a Monday to Friday. 10 to 11, except Thursday from 12 to 1. And when you say uh, communication with the Spanish community, do you mean with the Spanish-speaking only community, the non-bilingual community, or? Uh, no, 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 I say that the, the, the oriented, we, we need to orient the, the uh, Spanish community more more the activities. It's a, 
Uh, no, they, they don't hear nothing. They don't get any information beside the the uh, Zero Lancaster magazine. But not everybody read. Uh, not everybody see that. So people they don't take or they don't take their time to to read and uh, to know more about about sport, uh, park, uh, city um, park and recreation, uh, pools, uh, all sport to the city. Uh, and I know because I has uh, looking for the information and Sierra Lancaster has a lot of a, a, a lot of programs, but it's not linking or not connecting to the uh, to the Spanish community. So uh, I think we can start. Uh, it's it's a very simple. It's all you have to do is schedule to my program and say, oh, we're going to have this event uh, next next week. And what are the benefits? What are the phone numbers? What are, you know? So all these program, like 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 this program, I really like it. And if I don't come here tonight, I don't want to be able to to know. But uh, um, many Spanish people is part of this community, and 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 I'm sure they need help. And and this and the and this. Uh, I don't know, she left already. Oh, the lady was here um, for the for the for the pressure. Exactly, they need it. But some of this or those people or many people they don't speak English. So, but anyway, they need help, and I think we can help these people uh, through the city or or, or or through myself, and then connect and, and and give you more more help to them. Do you have a, any? guesstimate of what percentage of the Antelope Valley residents are Spanish speaking only? Uh, only, no. But I can give you, it's uh, around between the two cities. Uh, we, uh, the, in this city, the 54% of the uh, community is Spanish. And in, uh, in Palmdale, it's around uh, 63, 62. Uh, and that's that's a statistic. It's a court of the 2010 uh, federal census. That what we get that information from there. But uh, exactly, that's a good question. We don't know because we don't we don't make a, a, a search to, to see who speak only English, who speak only Spanish. But uh, but uh, 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 and other cities, they they have a lot of communication with them. Uh, no matter what, if it's not, we are no majority. We are part of this community. If we pay, if we pay taxes, we, no matter what, if we don't work and no, we go into the supermarket, we buy uh, something, uh, some portion of that taxes is staying in the city. Uh, and we are not asking, asking for any budget or, or money or funds, only participation to our, with our community. I have a question. A lot of this is being developed as we go, but my idea was that through your radio program, you could feature some of the other people that, like the out project that we just uh, heard earlier. And that is a way for you to connect your audience to the other group, and that helps us all come together. And like I said, we're kind of feeling through this as we go, but that's an excellent way for you to be of service to other groups and get yourself recognized in the process. And pretty soon, we're just going to have one heck of a potluck dinner with all sorts of people <laughs> just getting along because we like each other and we discover how much we are alike more than we are different. And that's the point of this commission. So uh, let's put our heads together and think about how we can use your resources as well as ours to get the word out about embracing diversity. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful note. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No, no. I think uh, being an avid listener of the radio station, I think you put it very well. And I'm very proud that uh, the radio station is actually focusing on our uh, mission, celebrate our uniqueness, embrace common viewpoints, and uh, create opportunities. That is uh, great. And thank you for coming. Thank you, Arturo. Thank you very much. Uh, and, the, and the other things I want to I wanna mention, uh, the, the language for us in our program is not a barrier, it's not a problem. I don't speak perfect English, but I can translate. So many of um, the, the uh, people who come to talk to my program, they speak no, no Spanish, and I take my time to translate. And, and uh, that's not a problem, you see, because if we start from there, from the uh, lang uh, language uh, item, if we don't break that barrier, we, we cannot advance. That's not a problem. So you you feel, uh, I invite you, uh, um, I invite to, 
any department from City of Lancaster. They have a lot of a lot of information to give us in order to to make the the community to participate and in, 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 in more in the community. Thank you, Mr. Villanueva. Would you like to put your phone number on the record that would be telephoned during the program hours? Yes, of course. Um, my phone number is 661-435-2110. So during the hours of Monday to Friday, 10 to 11, and Thursday from 12 to 1. Yeah, that is correct. The number is 661-435-2110. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Staff Kamlowski, is it possible for you to assist us to add to our agenda for our next working meeting any methods for responding to these partnering requests? Yes, in fact, I have an update for the radio station. They are they have reached out to Joe Cabral in our communications department. One of our issues is that the structure of this radio station, they, um, it's not free to the city. We have to come up with the budget to pay for the mayor or a spot on the radio station. Okay. Is that is Come on up to the microphone, just so that it's taped properly. Thank you. There is, there is two things. If I invite you to the program, eventually, there's no problem, there's no cost. But uh, um, what I offered, uh, I, I talked to Mr. Cabral, is an offer permanent program, one hour per week, can be Monday, can be Tuesday. If you, every week, or a permanent, at the same time, you have the program, people start to listen to you, you start to get the different information. Like I say, that's not as, a, uh, as I'm not offered as a business. It's only in, uh, in order to cover the 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 the, uh, the cost. That's that. Uh, that's why we we offer that if it's part of the budget. But uh, but uh, uh, exactly, we we offer permanent every single Monday, Tuesday, Friday, etc. Any other day, whatever is convenient for the city, and he can schedule to the different department, you schedule to go to talk, and we have a different in, in subject, and the people is waiting and listening for that. And the, I invite all the time the people to, to call, to make a, a comments, to make complaints also, in the, in the, in the good way and with respect it, uh, to others, but uh, and, and works pretty good, pretty good, and, and, and that's why we offered uh, in up uh, uh, the, the program, not as a business, but up uh, cost money. Okay. So I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I understand, Mr. Cabral. Then, uh, without cost, can book a slot to serve the community, or there is a cost for that as well? If the city of Lancaster want to take a permanent program, we make a one-year contracts, uh, three months, uh, six months, or whatever, and see so to see how it works. Uh, you can do it. If it's not. Uh, eventually, you can give me a call and we can schedule once in a while uh, uh, an interview. So it's the once in a while interview that requires Those funding. Costs. Exactly. I see. Okay, so we could talk about that a little more and okay. check with Mr. Cabral about it. And then we also um, had Angela Riley um, on this week to prom or last week to promote the Martin Luther King Day of Service. And I believe we also had another staff member on your show recently. Okay, actually, I have out. a problem last yeah. Monday about uh, Martin Luther King, right. whole full hours and was pretty good, pretty. But uh, one of the, one of the, my purpose at the end of, of this uh, program is educate and motivate the people. It's a very important. Sometimes you you can see people are very depressed. They have no job. They're in, in a home all day, and you it's just, it's just good to listen to somebody to give you good words, good motivation, good, and, and that's, that's very important because uh, uh, if, the people, if the people participate, it's an interest team from the, from the city of Lancaster because we have a lot of uh, residents in the city of Lan uh, Palmdale. And I want to mention, Palmdale have a permanent program for the last two years, every Wednesday. If they send every Wednesday, somebody different from say, some different department, and works pretty good. So that's why I feel and I see the city of Lancaster have zero communication compared not only with me, with any other uh, a, a magazine or something like that. 
it's direct. It's cool. Just let me add, and that's one of the reasons why I invited him, because several of the listeners actually uh, called the program and they said, why doesn't anybody from Lancaster come? I want to hear news from Lancaster. Well, then you're being very effective, and we appreciate that you came. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, and I think our last speaker tonight, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, is Jen Skidmore from Lancaster Kiwanis. Thank you for having me. Um, Kiwanis International is an organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the world one child and one community at a time. That's our defining statement. It takes no more than a desire to change your world, one child and one community at a time. Founded in 1915 in Detroit, Michigan, Kiwanis International now comprises more than 600,000 members, men, women, boys, girls, gay, straight, black, white, or brown, Christian, Jewish, Islamic, Buddhist, atheist, sighted, blind, hearing or deaf, fit, or like me, differently abled. It doesn't matter if you are a lawyer, a doctor, a police officer, a homemaker, all are welcome to join, and we welcome all to join. There are six objects of Kiwanis International um, that were established in 1924 in Denver, Colorado, and through the succeeding decades, they have remained unchanged. The first is to give primacy to the human and spiritual rather than the material values of life to encourage the daily living of the golden rule in all human relationships, to promote the adoption and application of higher social and business and professional standards, to develop by precept and example a more intelligent, aggressive, and serviceable citizenship, to provide through Kiwanis clubs a practical means to form enduring friendships, to render altruistic service, and to build better communities. And finally, to cooperate in creating and maintaining that sound public opinion and high idealism, which makes possible the increase of righteousness, justice, patriotism, and goodwill. Lancaster Kiwanis is the oldest service organization of any kind in the high desert, being founded in 1926, and has helped charter all other Kiwanis clubs in the Antelope Valley and high desert. We are a part of the California, Nevada, and Hawaii District of Kiwanis International. We've participated actively every year in the Antelope Valley Fair, working tirelessly during the concerts and events. You see us taking tickets or showing people to seats. Or you'll also seeing us, see us at the annual tradition of the Kiwanis Junior Livestock Auction, helping local youth with their business endeavors and selling their animals. And most recently, the Kiwanis duck races, which are held at the uh, Dry Town Park in Palmdale. And if I have read my emails correctly, this last year, um, it raised over $70,000 for local organizations and charities. And in the last 15 years, Lancaster Kiwanis specifically has given more than $150,000 in scholarships to youth at Antelope Valley High School, Lancaster High School, Eastside High School, Desert Winds High School, and Desert Sands Charter High School. In fact, our club was pleased to hear a report of one of our scholarship recipients who initially received a $500 scholarship from our club, then um, the following year was able to receive a renewal scholarship of $1,000. Um, she went to Antelope Valley College she then, um, she graduated from AVC with a, an AA in general studies and went on to um, Northridge where she graduated this last December with a degree in journalism. Um, her mother uh, is a, her, own, her mother's um, only source of income is as a duty aide at one of the schools. So there's like hardly any income whatsoever in her family, and she's the first in her entire family to receive a college education. We also, I personally am the region advisor for um, the Kiwanis, the Kalniva, uh, Kiwanis Committee for um, 
Key Club. So I oversee the high schools in um, the entire high desert up to Bishop and actually the southern half of Nevada. Um, so I oversee about 85 different high schools with um, approximately 7,000 high school students in our organization. Um, and we, Key Club is considered a service leadership program. Um, we have um, Key Club at every single one of the Antelope Valley Union High School District schools, um, as well as at Desert Sands Charter High School and um, Paraclete High School, and we're always looking to add more schools. Uh, our SLPs um, teach leadership skills through the vehicle of service. Uh, we have um, organizations that, or we have uh, clubs, I guess, um, for elementary school level as K kids, terrific kids, and bringing up grades. For the junior high level, we have builders clubs. Um, high school level is key club. For disabled adults, it is action clubs. For college level, it is circle K. And then we also have key leader camps, which specifically teach leadership opportunities. Uh, one of our biggest uh, projects that we have going on currently, we um, Kiwanis International has participated with UNICEF, um, and um, as of 2010, we have eliminated IDD, which is um, iodine deficiency disorder, throughout the world. Our newest project is called the Eliminate Project, um, and in Eliminate are the letters M and T, which stand for maternal and neonatal tetanus. Our goal is in 40 countries worldwide, um, tetanus is still an issue. I know in industrialized um, areas it's not. We have uh, tetanus vaccines which are good for 10 years. Tetanus is a spore that it's found in the dirt everywhere. We would have it here we, and they have it in every, everywhere around the world. It's a spore that's found in the dirt. And through the Eliminate Project, we are educating midwives and shamans and anybody else that deals with the medical needs of people on safe birthing practices. The reason being that you can have the perfect pregnancy, you can have the perfect delivery, and your midwife uses a knife that accidentally touched the ground in her hut, and when she goes to cut the cord, She's given your infant and, your, and yourself tetanus. Tetanus is a disease that's been around since the Bible and is known as the seven-day death. It takes seven days for an infant to die. Um, the numbers are one child every nine minutes dies from tetanus, uh, which equates to 40,000 children every year within 40 um, different countries. We are partnering with UNICEF again, and our goal is to raise $110 million by 2015, which is the 100th anniversary of Kiwanis International. I know most of you um, probably have children and understand how very important that bond is of being able to touch your, child, your children and offer them comfort, and that skin-to-skin -skin contact. With a child that ends up with tetanus, you cannot touch them because it will send them into painful convulsions. You can't talk to them and offer them vocal comfort because it will send them into convulsions. You can't turn the lights on because that will send them into painful convulsions. Um, so the goal of the Eliminate Project is to raise awareness and education and um, funding um, to help eliminate um, tetanus. That's our current project. It's lofty. We have time. I know I personally am fundraised completely out. So I have been asked, how can we possibly participate in this project? And the reality is, we can get soap. We can donate soaps. I travel ridiculous amounts all over the place. I collect the hotel soap. I can send that to UNICEF, and they'll be able to use it. Nail brushes that we use. As ladies, I'm constantly cleaning my nails all the time. Um, those kinds of items can certainly be donated. Uh, I also, as I said, being a region advisor for Key Club, come with a wealth of free, free labor. So, <laughs> 
when you have projects that you need volunteers for, please contact me because I do have the resources to get you as many volunteers as you will need, ever. Thank you for allowing me to speak before you. Questions? Yes, I, I would just like to say it always amazes me how much good is in this world, and I appreciate everything you do. I was at a meeting just earlier today uh, about sexual abuse of children and how to prevent it, and there were high school teachers and DS, uh, DCFS people, and everyone's trying to come together to understand how to put programs in schools, and so when we go through all these things, I hear the resources that you have, and this is what's going to help us put everybody together in a Absolutely. more efficient way. And I appreciate everything you said. Um, and my high schoolers are constantly looking for service projects. So if you have projects, like currently, um, they do trash pickups. I don't particularly like having them out doing that because <laughs> we have had an instance where a drunk driver actually took out some kids doing trash pickup. So that's not one that I really recommend, but they do still do that. Um, they work at the nursing homes and work with the elderly um, because really we're all children at heart, um, regardless of our age. Uh, some of the other projects that like Lancaster um, High School Key Club has done is Ben Soap, which is sex offender awareness program. Um, they've actually put on coffee talks um, around schools for the, the people that live within that half mile of, school, of a school. Um, because as you know, with Jessica's law, um, sex offenders can't live within a half a mile of a school, church, or daycare facility where children congregate. And so um, they actually went to a school, um, gave information out. We had the sheriff's department with us and answered community questions on how, you know, what how to keep our, our children safe. Mm -hmm. um, the stranger danger is really antiquated and actually cuts off a lot of resources available to children, so we don't really recommend that one, but um, those are just some of the projects that our high schoolers are doing. Um, actually, in our, um, at Highland High School in um, Palmdale, we have a young man who is an international trustee within Key Club. So he's working at the highest levels of our organization in Indianapolis and traveling all over the world promoting Key Club, and he's actually from our community. So it's kind of exciting. We have very ambitious young people, and it's very fun working with them. Well, and it sounds like we can keep them busy as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't mean to minimize your efforts in any way, but is there a drop-off place for soap in this valley? Um, my house? <laughs> no. <laughs> Perhaps we could come up with a soap right. drop off location. <laughs> At the very least. All right, super. Any other questions? I have a I have a comment. Uh, I just wanna basically say, you know, having worked with, you know, uh Jen for and her father is in the uh Kiwanis, I mean I can I can see personally firsthand as far as what the organization does for this community. It's just like, nice to see when you look at the media, you know, talk about, when you talk about public education, you always see the negative. But it's just so nice to see, you know, basically like a lot of the, I've seen a lot of the service projects in action. And as far as when you see this community, kids of all races, Absolutely. you know, working on different projects, I mean, it's just very uplifting. And, um, and they're fun to work with because they're, they have lots of energy. They're very enthusiastic. Sometimes we as adults don't quite understand that enthusiasm. And it freaks us out a little bit. <laughs> there. You know, and, and just how you, I mean, how you're, you, op you open your home. Absolutely. To, the, to, the, to those students. I mean, it's just, it was just nice to see. It was no, they were, they were very uh, mannerable, very respectful, and it was very nice. So, so I, re I really appreciate that. Thank you. As an educator, I really appreciate that. Yeah, and it is kind of, because I'm not an educator, but I am at Lancaster High School two days a week for an hour. And those kids know that every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, I will be there. Whether it's raining or shining, I will be there every Wednesday at 2 o'clock and every Friday at 2 o'clock. And there is a, a comfort in that, in um, that stability. I'm not there all the time like teachers are. But I am there every Wednesday and every Friday. 
And that stability is hugely important to our young people. I have a question. Um, back in the you know Stone Age when I was in high school, um, Key Club was for um, boys. It was. Is it open now to girls? It is. Oh, cool. um, in 1983, it was actually. Um, that would be after I, I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is Way actually a boys and age. girls organization. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, it used to actually be a boys only organization. It was started in Sacramento, California. Um, and the, the leaders of um, Key Club picked key students that they thought would be good students in their community um, to lead this club at their school. And we used to have Kiwanians instead of uh, like the, the guys were Kiwanis and the Kiwanians were the women's organization. And now we're just Kiwanis. Right. Um, and one more question. How do we get more information on um, programs for the junior highs? Um, you can actually um, go to Kiwanis1.org. Um, we'll help you out with that. Is that the number one? Um, Kiwanis, O-N-E, K-I-W-A-N-I-S-O-N-E.org. Okay. K -I -W -A -N -I -S We'll tell you everything you want to know about Kiwanis. Lancaster Kiwanis also has a website, um, LancasterKiwanis.org. And so you'll have, there's all kinds of information, because we do partner with the Boys and the Girls Club here in the Antelope Valley. Actually, we partner with the Boys and Girls Clubs all over the country. Um, we also partner with the Painted Turtle and um, lots of other organizations, Special Olympics. And this last year, uh, or the last two years, the Key Clubbers have had their district project has been called Project Shine. And they've actually um, been working with, because for Kiwanis, we have an organization called the Action Club for adults that are uh, mentally or physically handicapped. Um, but we don't have that same organization for high schoolers or anybody under 18. So Project Shine was established to meet that need. And so all of our high schoolers have been working very closely with Special Olympics. They put on a dance over at Paraclete High School in, at um, Halloween for the young people in um, Special Olympics. They also do the summer games and have lots of fun. Thank you very much, Ms. Skidmore. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm struck by uh, how this body started with a brainstorming uh, chart on the ways that human beings are different. That we could start with the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male and then identify all the other ways that we are other, that we are disabled or we are gay or we are Latino or we are everything that Ms. Skidmore just defined that Kiwana serves. That's remarkable. I wasn't aware of that. And in fact, I disparage the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant reputation that Kiwanis has. So my apologies and thank you for educating me. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Uh, public business from the floor, non-agendized items. Do we have any speaker cards? No, we don't. Or anyone who would like to get up and Sorry. talk for a couple of minutes? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're invited to do that each time. We have someone standing up. If you, when you speak, you could please keep your Good comments evening, down to three minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am pleased to be here with you. Uh, actually, I, I can see all the advantage that our community have. Unfortunate for us in Lake LA, we don't have any opportunity of this or any services because one of the things that, is, that we need more is transportation for, the, for our people to come. Everything we have to chop in Lancaster or Palmdale, which is nothing wrong, but unfortunately we don't receive anything in return from neither of the two cities. And uh, I am Manuel Magaña. I live in uh, 38723 156th Street, uh, Lake Los Angeles. And we has been, I represent Latinos Americanos in Action, uh, which we have 17 years celebrating the Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we are uh, more than anything a social organization that we were, we were formed just to celebrate the Cinco de Mayo with the purpose to take the transition uh, and let our children know 
quad uh, is Cinco de Mayo because many believe that we just get together to get drunk or hear, hear the music and know with any meaning. But uh, we have been lucky that we, we don't sell liquor, our organization, and the way that we sponsor our events is by donations. Depending on the donation is the celebration that we, that we present to the people because we don't charge the one that they attend the Cinco de Mayo. We have a parade and then a festivity with light music bands from uh, one o'clock up to seven o'clock and the parade is from 12 to one. But uh, actually it's not about the organization that I want to talk to you about it. It's what do you, all of you can do to help our community to get some of those services because they cannot come in here to get the services that they were mentioned today. Yes, we got the radio, which we are lucky because anyway, we can communicate to the radio station. We, we, it doesn't matter which program, uh, they're always uh, welcoming us to speak and let the community know about our needs. And uh, we're, like I said, we're a, uh, a rural area and uh, unfortunate, uh, I know that nobody has us in there, but we, we are pretty happy. We got half an acre on our property. Some others got two acres or two and a half or one acre. Uh, and uh, actually we have communication among ourselves. Uh, talking about the Spanish, the Spanish population, in there we are 67%. About the question that I hear uh, some of you make it about how many or uh, just playing the Spanish and not uh, not knowing any English. I believe of those 67 percent is at least 37 to 40 percent that they don't speak any English at all. So it's a quite a bit uh, needed community. We got classes, but again, we got the classes in here and uh, Mr. Castagnon, he's having, he's volunteering himself, giving classes, and some of, uh, of the students, they are benefiting, and some others in the same place where he said, they are donating their time without receiving any funds from no one, not even for supplies. They have to buy it themselves to supply those uh, things that they need, paper, pencils, and everything to these people that they're getting there. Uh, they're having classes also of, of computer, which is a great benefit, but again, our lack is transportation, because maybe I can come, but what about the rest of the community? How do they will do it? They don't have a car. If they have a car, they hardly make it to Palmdale or Lancaster, but they're not too sure if they will return with your car or somebody else will have to pull them. And actually, that is one of the things that it has been bothering us uh, in there. We have uh, been presenting these needs to everyone, but unfortunately, like I said, we haven't received any response on how do they can help us. And I would like uh, to see some efforts. Uh, in order for us to have communication that like we have been mentioning here is by helping each other not only depends on somebody else, but also us helping others. And that is one of the things that uh, we has been trying to do. But uh, it's pretty hard. We are a few of the ones that we are doing that. But uh, I'm sure that if we get more volunteers to help our pure communities like uh, Lake Los Angeles, uh, Little Rock, and some others, we will be better off. And we will be benefiting all in the long run. Thank you for the time that you have given me, and uh, I really appreciate uh, you for being uh, here as a group and hearing our concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Manuel, I'm sorry, I missed your last name. What is your last name? Magaña. Magaña. And your organization that you work it's with? It's Latinos Americanos en Acción. Thank you. And uh, I was, I am an ex board member I was up to these elections, unfortunately I didn't make it, but uh, I was representing uh, Keppel Union School District for five years, which I was very pleased. And uh, we tried to help our parents more than anything else to training 
and give them uh, the confidence to participate for the betterment of their children. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are getting, but not as far as we would like to. But I'm sure that with a little help, we can be successful in all the areas. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mr. Margonia. Uh, I just want to comment very quickly that uh, I just want to say that Mr. Magaña is a very beloved person by the Hispanic community. And uh, I was fortunate to join him many years ago. And uh, one of the things that Lancaster, because living here in Lancaster, uh, we think about the people that come from all the incorporated areas into the city of Lancaster, Palmdale, et cetera. And uh, the most that we can help, because I've been, like he mentioned, helping in uh, teaching ESL services, English as a second language, is very beneficial. I brought a lot of my students, and they said, I've never been here. I've never been uh, there. So it is good. And uh, we have to think of the problems that we have, but also I love when I present a problem, but I present three suggestions. These are my suggestions, and that's the way that I work, and hopefully we can get uh, together to create good projects. Thank I would you. be delighted to get together with any of you and see we can come with a solution together. For me, I know what we need. How to get that help? No. I cannot be able to tell you this is the way that we can get that help that we need. So we know that we are sick, but we don't know uh, the foundation that. of our illness. Right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.